Amanda, the other thing I, I, I was thinking about is the, the urgency of sepsis. We have a number of sepsis campaigns going on. We've really indoctrinated our physicians, our ED physicians, our house staff, all of our primary care staff to the importance of the aggressive treatment of sepsis. Um, and I think that also plays into this whole area of, of the urgent need for new drugs. Yes, uh, I think that we, we know from um, studies is that uh, with each passing hour in a patient with septic shock, their chances of survival decrease dramatically. So time is limited, um, and that underscores the importance of choosing the right drug that could cover possible resistant pathogens from the outset, but also having available more than one drug to treat a wide spectrum of resistance mechanisms so that um, if not only can you choose well empirically, but also if that patient is not improving as you would expect, that you have another option to go to. So a single drug in this area is not sufficient, and we need to keep developing uh, new drugs to cover all the possible scenarios that you encounter. And it also points to the urgent need for better microbiologic diagnoses, rapid diagnoses of positive blood cultures, rapid sensitivity testing, wound cultures, etc. Because right now, many of our labs are still dependent on the traditional way of doing a blood culture, waiting for the organism to grow, plating it out, and then doing sensitivity testing. So there are a lot of urgent needs with respect to sepsis, all of which tie into the availability of drugs for resistant pathogens and, and stewardship as well. And I don't know if we, we should talk a little bit now about this issue of how we're going to bring new drugs on board, how we're going to work them into our therapeutic armamentarium, and, and frankly, what kind of preparation do we need to do amongst the ID community and the general medical community? Because we've seen this strategy before of a, a, a drug being developed, a drug having activity, and the drug not being frankly used or reserved or controlled appropriately. Do you have any thoughts about what kind of controls we need and also how, how does a company like yours, which does you know, enormous amount of medical education, has always been an ethical company that really has looked to make sure that its drugs are used wisely. How do we prepare the community to use these drugs correctly? I, I think that's a really important point because, of course, resistance and, and stewardship go hand in hand. And I think one of the goals of, of drug development is also identifying the right patient population that is appropriate um, for the drug's use. I think education is a, is a key component of it, and I think we do have a responsibility to clearly state and identify you know, which uh, drugs that we're developing uh, you know, belong to which patient group. I think Merck is um, committed to developing drugs for patients across a wide spectrum of the gram-negative or even the antibacterial space. For imipenem relobactam, um, because its intentions to restore susceptibility to imipenem resistant organisms, um, that is the, the target population mm -hmm. is in patients that have confirmed imipenem resistant infections. Right. Um, so, you know, I think that that would be part of our educational message as we move through phase three and, and beyond is to, um, is to uh, focus on that population. In fact, our ongoing phase three trial is specifically in imipenem resistant infections. So we're taking a good look at that population. And just to wrap up, as we're at the American Society of Microbiology meeting, this is a, sort of the merger of the old ASM spring meeting and the fall ICAC meeting. It's the first time this meeting has been sort of held conjointly uh, in Boston. Um, I think one of the other questions that I'm going to be looking for is the most, the best information on how to test for carbapenem resistance, because I think this is still a, a real issue in clinical microbiology laboratories. What is the best test? to predict carbapenem resistance, particularly at a hospital level as opposed to a, you know, a research level. And I, I, that's something I'm going to be looking for very much at this meeting. Yeah, I, I think that that's a tremendously important area is that if we we're developing these drugs, it would be great if we could know quicker who needs them. Um, you do have minutes, hours to make decisions on antibiotic choice for these patients, and so having something that could do that quicker is certainly 
of great interest. I don't think it's quite there yet. Um, I, I for agree it's not there yet. It's like practice, some, but... Uh, something but I argue about with our clinical microbiology staff all the time. But, but yeah. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you so much. It was an interesting poster, and we hope to hear much more about these new drugs from you and from other sources as well. Great. Thank you. Thank you.